Hello, my name is Jason Lenny, and I'm the product manager for the release stage here at GitLab. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you a bit today about what we plan to do over the next few months to a year. Uh, maybe the first thing, though, would be to talk a little bit about what uh, release automation and orchestration are. Um, so if you're familiar with the industry terms, uh, this aligns to CDRA and ARO, uh, which are the continuous delivery and release automation reports, as well as the application release automation and orchestration reports. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, what this means really is just taking the software that comes out of your CI system, it's been tested, it's been scanned, uh, and it's ready to follow the path to production through your environments and ultimately to your users. Um, with that, um, there's a few North Stars that we see as very, very important uh, in, in achieving successes in this area. Um, the first is probably the one that uh, I think is most important, um, and this is really just looking at things in terms of zero-touch delivery. Um, if you do a lot of work with continuous integration systems, you know that there's a lot of maturity that's developed there uh, where all you have to do is check in some code. Uh, the system can automatically determine what language it's in, what tests need to be run, uh, and build it and, and do everything for you and, and, and end up with a release deliverable. Uh, we have a vision for doing the same thing uh, with the release side. Um, so we have environments in our system. We have the code in the system, and we want to pair those up automatically um, so that there's very, very minimal to no configuration needed to make that happen. Um, also, uh, we want to make environments, or we want to continue to make environments ephemeral and available where needed. Uh, one of the great features that comes with GitLab uh, CD is the uh, review apps feature, uh, and that lets you spin up environments to test uh, on demand. They can be associated with merge requests, they can just be associated with the pipeline, whatever you want to do there. Um, it's on demand and it makes testing and, and in particular doing user acceptance validation and that sort of thing very, very easy. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we see the need for uh, secure and compliant deployment. Uh, and there's a lot of innovation that's happening in that space, especially around things like binary authorization. Um, but being able to lock down the path to production, being able to um, take the output of your continuous integration and continuous deployment systems uh, and have those kind of like assets that are associated with uh, the build and deployment be bundled in and in a secure way with the release itself um, so that you can really trust that what, uh, what you built, what you tested, and what you deployed is really what you expected. That's going to be incredibly powerful, especially as we're moving to these more distributed deployment systems with Kubernetes and things like that that um, can be quite complex to understand. You really need some, some, some powerful basic tools in there to make sure that you know what's happening. So making up the release stage, there's actually a few different categories here um, that we focus on. Continuous delivery sort of captures the, um, all of the automation around uh, deploying to Kubernetes, deploying to other systems. A lot of this is based off of the continuous integration pipelines that we also build here at GitLab. Um, but really, it's all about orchestrating things in a very deployment, transactional-oriented way, uh, which leads pretty naturally into our release orchestration category. Uh, which is where we will be looking at more of the big picture and like as a company how are you orchestrating and planning releases uh, and supporting that uh, now an important thing to call out here is that at gitlab our vision for release orchestration is that it's a automated system that supports delivery and is not uh, uh, tools for kind of slowing things down or blocking uh, blocking delivery so uh, with continuous delivery and release orchestration together uh, we believe that you can do continuous deployment to production uh, and not run into the kinds of organizational or planning problems that, that you can run into uh, if, you, if you don't have a good plan. Um, pages, so many folks probably use pages, uh, and it's a great feature for delivering content that goes with your release. Review apps I mentioned, uh, but they're just such a powerful tool for being able to preview what's going to actually happen in your production environment. Uh, incremental rollouts is sort of a sub subcategory of the uh, continuous delivery category where we are really just focusing on making sure that um, supporting all kinds of incremental rollout systems and on different platforms is supported. Um, feature flags is something new that we delivered uh, towards the end of last year uh, and we're continuing to mature this year. Uh, but uh, this is implementing feature flags for your code and using GitLab to manage them. And then lastly, release governance here is about um, kind of that third North Star that I talked about where um, it's doing the control and tracking and auditing of what's happening in releases. But again, similar to release orchestration, doing it away in a way where there's not 
manual gates or kind of you know individuals who have to go and approve different things to go to go on uh, we want to see these uh, in, in, integrated into the fully automated deployment chain so that everything remains zero touch, but you have that confidence that you need in order to deliver. Uh, one thing that I'll call out here is that if you visit this page, each of these vision links uh, will take you to a page where you can see in a lot of detail what we plan to do next, how we're thinking about the space, uh, and would welcome your participation there. Um, and it would be great to hear from you. Uh, we also can link to uh, learn more pages that have kind of a basic overview, as well as the detailed documentation for each of these. So moving on to what's next, uh, we have a few releases coming up, and I'll, I'll preview a few of the items that, uh, that we're going to be delivering. So in 11.8, which is our February release, uh, we're doing a couple things to focus on improving the way that pages work. Um, so in a recent release, we added access control for pages. We're going to be enabling that on GitLab.com. Uh, we're also going to be adding support for subgroups, which is a very popular item and one that I'm happy that we're going to be delivering now. Uh, and then another improvement to our feature flags is to be able to turn them on and off per environment. Um, so uh, like I said, feature flags is a new feature. Right now they're global and turned on and off at a global level. Um, but this, uh, this starts to mature that feature and, and make it so that you can use it in more scenarios. And you'll see that there's more coming up as well. So 11.9, uh, which is our March release, um, we're adding the ability to limit pipeline concurrency in different ways. Um, we've had a few requests to do things like um, limit pipeline concurrency per environment or per project or per job. Uh, and we have an approach here that um, you're welcome to come click on this issue and check out and get involved in the discussion uh, where we're gonna have flexible semaphores that can be created uh, in any pipeline that um, will allow you to limit pipeline concurrency in whatever way you want. Um, continuing the theme of maturing feature flags, we're going to be adding auditing and permissions as to who can, who can control those. Um, binary authorization is, uh, I'll skip ahead to this one for uh, just because it's, it, it's easier to start with this one. Um, but binary authorization is a way to, in your continuous integration platform, in, uh, mark a release as trusted uh, and also mark it as having certain things having happened to it. Um, so there's an attestation signature, which can be associated with all of the tests running or having a security scan run. Uh, and this will, on the release side, ensure that that is um, checked and that only the right things can be deployed uh, into your various environments. Um, so the first part is actually working with the continuous integration pipeline to make sure that this is set up and possible and easy to do. Uh, and then this sort of follows on from that in that we'll make sure that uh, there's a one-click or easy way to turn on the binary authorization feature in your GKE clusters. Uh, another one, big one in the 11.9 release is running the build on the merged code before merging. Um, so we're continuing to work towards having uh, release trains and merge trains that, are, uh, make, that will make it easier to manage how features are flowing out to your production environment, especially when there's a lot of uh, contention going on. Um, so um, that's a good issue to check out if that's something that you're interested in. The 11.10 release, which will be coming in April, uh, has scriptable runbooks for releases. This is something that I'm pretty excited about. Um, this is going to be a easier way to set up things that are like, well, runbooks is a good example, but the, um, uh, it, there's a certain way that you can look at it as, at a release as a kind of runbook. Uh, so um, there's manual and automated steps that need to be set up in there. And we have a vision where you'll be able to do that in Markdown and create the plan in Markdown, but also embed code within that as well so that things like checks to see if the environment is up or down before you start the deployment could be a one button click inside of that runbook. Uh, we think that's going to be very powerful and open up uh, release management to people who are less technical than those who might be editing the YAML in a continuous integration pipeline. Um, in the 11.10 release also, uh, we'll be adding release package creation from the GitLab CI YAML. Uh, we re recently introduced a releases feature uh, where you can create and manage releases uh, directly from within GitLab. Um, so this is maturing that feature by allowing you to actually create the package as well. Adding truly dynamic environment URLs to pages uh, automatic HTTPS renewal support for custom domains, uh, and then an environment dashboard, which will let you see for your project at a glance what all of your environments are, 
uh, and uh, what, um, uh, what, what's deployed to them, for example, and what the status is. Um, so of course this goes on. We have things planned out to uh, about Q3. Uh, I would love your feedback if you're interested in any of these items to jump in uh, and let me know what you think. Uh, and then also down here below, uh, we've got uh, this other interesting item category uh, where uh, you can see just other items that we've identified within the release area as being important or inter interesting. Uh, we haven't scheduled them yet, uh, but um, if you think that uh, one of these things is um, you know, valuable or, or that we should reconsider, uh, I would love to hear your feedback. So again, jump in and, um, and let me know. Uh, the other way that I'll mention that you can contact me is up here. Uh, you can either send me a DM directly on Twitter or an email. I'll get both of those. I'd be happy to hear from you and would love to chat. So hopefully this was a, a helpful bit of information. Um, and uh, thank you for your time. Till later.